Nanu Nanu! Welcome to the Fortress of Darkness, the nerdy nexus for all your geeky needs. I'm your host, Beth Damiano. We're bashing headfirst into the history of the Transformers character, Impactor, on today's Cliff Notes. Impactor was introduced in 1986 exclusively into Marvel UK's Transformers comics. His first appearance was in the famous storyline Target 2006, written by Transformers guru Simon Furman. Impactor's name isn't just for show. This guy is armed to the teeth. He transforms into a tank and uses a shoulder-mounted cannon, hidden missiles, a handgun, and his iconic harpoon hand. This legendary Transformer, who you've probably never heard of, was unique in that he was never introduced in the United States during Generation 1. That being said, since his creation, he has been responsible for some major parts of the Transformers mythos. He was the leader of the Wreckers, a group of ragtag Autobots mostly made of toys that Hasbro couldn't get the rights to fit into their animated series. He also coined the team's famous catchphrase, Wreck and Rule. He is perhaps best known these days for his strained relationship with the Wrecker's most famous leader and his previous subordinate, Springer, who in turn is famous for being that green robot Han Solo who RC picked over Hot Rod. Impactor began life in Marvel UK's comics as leader of Emra and Sauron's Wreckers in an Optimus Prime and Megatronless world. He was bold and insubordinate, but had mutual yet rocky respect for his superiors. He was first brought in to assassinate the Decepticon warlord Trannis, who had taken Megatron's place. The unit planned Operation Volcano, a plot to assassinate Decepticon's 10 deadliest killers using Zauron as bait. Unfortunately, the plan backfired when the attempted assassination of Zauron was cancelled as Megatron ordered all his troops to Earth. A sole Decepticon, Macabre, ignored Megatron's orders and fired on Zauron, but Impactor pushed him out of the way and took the hits. This left Impactor fatally wounded, dying in Zauron's arms, but not before naming Autobot Springer as his replacement. His death would continue to haunt Autobots Ultra Magnus and Springer, the latter not feeling up to par with his predecessor. Eventually, a renegade Autobot scientist named Flame resurrected a zombie impactor and kidnapped Zaron and the Wreckers. Springer came face to face with his haunting former leader and fought him until he made Impactor remember his past life. Like when he died. What a great friend you are, Springer. Impactor went on to sacrifice himself to stop Flame, thus ending Impactor's legacy in the Marvel Comics. Then, in 2006, IDW was awarded the comic rights to the Transformers franchise and Superstar Funana cried a little. In this new universe, Impactor was a pre-war miner who hung out with his best friend, peace-loving poet, Megatron. Yes, that Megatron. One day while drunk, Impactor gets into a bar fight, which his BFF stays out of. Unfortunately, both are arrested, and Megatron is beaten in jail by an officer, Whirl. Whirl was arrested, but this chain of events that Impactor started eventually leads Megatron to create a group of ragtag outlaws known as the Decepticons. Whirl is then incarcerated, and his new cellmate is Impactor, who subsequently beats Whirl to the point of critical condition. Circle of life. After the breakout of Civil War, Impactor joined the then little-known Autobot group, the Wreckers. It was here he battled Phase Sixer Black Shadow and eventually became the team's leader. It was shortly after this he recruited the Cybertronian who would go on to impact his life, Springer. Are we doing puns now? Have we stooped this low already? Springer idolized Impactor, hanging on to every word of his, and came to be like a younger brother to him. However, dark things were around the corner for our hook-handed deviant leader. Shortly after Springer's recruitment, Impactor's wreckers started taking on a very un-Autobot stance with their actions. Their ethics of fighting included torture, prisoner abuse, and even cold-blooded murder. To counter this, Megatron created Squadron X, the anti-wreckers. Unfortunately, this only infuriated Impactor, who saw them as a mockery of his team and blamed himself for their existence. He began a heartless vendetta to destroy them across the galaxy. During the battle for Hell's Point, he was nicknamed Kiloton for how badly he massacred the Decepticons. It was after this that Impactor replaced his hand with his signature Harpoon Hand and became increasingly unstable, a fact his superiors decided to conveniently glaze over. Wait, and the guy wasn't unstable before this? Robots are weird. Eventually, Squadron X and the Wreckers came to a head on the planet Pova, where the Wreckers finally captured their longtime rivals. That is, until resident Autobot Prick, Prowl, called and told them they were on neutral territory and to let Squadron X go. Enraged, Impactor personally executed every member of Squadron X, with his protege, Springer, attempting to stop him. Springer reported this incident to their superiors, and Impactor was arrested. Springer testified against Impactor, and he was imprisoned without spark removal so he could lament on his actions. As he was being dragged away, Springer told him that Squadron X deserved to die, but that didn't give him the right to kill them. 
Impactor was imprisoned on Garrus 9, and Springer replaced him as the leader of the Wreckers. A cover story was formed, stating that Squadron X attempted to escape and were killed during their flight. Twenty years later, Phasixer Overlord takes over Garrus 9 to draw out his former leader, Megatron. During this occupancy, Impactor is released by the Decepticon Snare to get help. Ironically, Impactor runs into the unit sent to G9 to take it back, the Wreckers. Though he and Springer butt heads, they team up to retake the prison. Springer, Impactor, and Twin Twist are captured and tortured. During this capture, Impactor accuses Springer of betraying his own unit. Meanwhile, the remaining Wreckers manage to acquire their true objective, the computer, Aquitus. Overwhelmed by freed Decepticon prisoners, they debate using the deterrence chips implanted in their heads to destroy them, but this would also kill Impactor. Having learned the truth about Pova, it isn't until human Verity Carlo convinces them that they decide not to flip the switch. Escaping with the help of Snare, Impactor, Springer, and the remaining Wreckers fought Overlord, who decimated the group. Impactor is knocked out, while Springer and Iron Fist manage to do some serious damage to that luscious lip beast of a Decepticon, but not before Overlord seemingly obliterates Springer. Impactor comes too, taking down Overlord, who begs Impactor to kill him after learning that Megatron is dead. Impactor stays his hand, and for Springer's honor, tells Overlord that he will face trial, finally coming to terms with his actions. Springer lived, albeit in a coma, and Impactor was pardoned, where he went off with surviving wrecker Guzzle. Impactor saw much of himself in Guzzle, including his violence and bloodlust. When Guzzle was captured, he rescued him, but succumbed to his own need for violence once again. In other media, he is mentioned as existing in the animated universe in the Allspark Almanac 2. Impactor does exist in the aligned universe as well. He was mentioned in the series Transformers Prime, where he was stated as being a dead member of the Wreckers. That's all we have time for today. Leave questions, comments, or snotty remarks below. Please remember to like, subscribe, and follow us on our social media. I'm Beth Damiano. You have been watching The Fortress of Dorkness. Never fear the dork up here.